and I want to start with you, Mr. Chikata, because there's a bit, I mean, they gave a lot of reasons, but one of them that the Supreme Court said, and that's where I want to start my question from, it said that the Speaker's action, which should have been taken, and I'm just paraphrasing it, which should have been taken by the High Court according to Article 99, constituted a grievous and veritable overstep of constitutional authority. And you can find that on page 18, I believe the last uh, but one paragraph of the, the, the judgments given by the Supreme Court. How do you take that first? Well, I think that we should start from the conclusion of the court and come back to some of the reasoning that they used. Now, when you look at that conclusion, it's interesting that the court basically granted the reliefs A, B, 1, A, B, and C, I think it is, of um, what was requested. Yes, 1, A, B, and C. And then they actually refused to grant an order restraining the speaker from pronouncing that is relief 2, relief 3, they also refused and relief for they also really didn't give any further uh, orders except that when you look at the conclusion of the majority judgment i believe it is at page 31 or thereabouts uh, 30 37 yes they talk about an order declaring the interpretation placed on article 97 1 G and H as inconsistent with the true meaning and import of Article 97.1 G and H. So that itself was again not really an order directing the speaker to do anything. It was simply talking about declaring the interpretation plays. They don't even refer to who plays that interpretation. Now the reason I highlight this is because what the court did was based on the writ that was presented. The writ that was presented made it look as if the filing of nominations is what leads to the vacation of the seats. So you find relief 1A, the filing of nomination of honorable so and so, the filing of nomination. Now, I have read the speaker's you know, statements uh, in the, the, I think they call it a formal communication by the speaker. He did not say that just the formal, just, just the filing of the nomination mm. amounted to vacation of the seat. In fact, the speaker went through this um, carpet crossing, as he called it, and highlighted the fact that what is at stake in 97.1G as well as H? is when a member, for instance, in 97.1H, a member who is in parliament as an independent leaves his party and becomes an independent. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, ceases to be an independent. I'm sorry, ceases to be an independent and becomes a member of a party. So in the case of Honorable Esiama, he had one as an MP for Formena, he had one as an independent, and it now appeared that he was not just filing a nomination, but he was now, he had left as an, he, he had ceased to be an independent, and he was now a member of a political party. Now, what the speaker referred to, which I saw in, in the statement in parliament, was the notice of poll that was filed in his case. Because the in the notice of pay, poll, in the notice of poll, obviously, Honorable Esiama declared that he was now a member of the new patriotic party. So in, in his case, if we want to focus on that for a moment, the elements that 971H requires you know, is apparent on the face of what he had filed to the Electoral Commission. Now, I assume that the Speaker must have had uh, access to whatever was filed to the Electoral Commission and so on. But, you know, the, the, I think the important first point that I want to make is that 
in the ultimate conclusion of the court, there are no directions to the speaker in respect of whether the seats have been vacated or not. So why, then, why do, I, do we have Apenyo Markin, KT Hammond and the rest telling the speaker that, in fact, KT Hammond precisely said that the speaker has lost well, and he cannot that, bar that, the four MPs from coming well, back to that, parliament. Well, first of all, I, I don't know that he had barred them from going to parliament, but that's why I read to you what the orders of the court actually are. The interpretation that the court sought was based on what was put before them. And what was put before them referred to the filing of nominations. I don't see that in the speaker's you know, formal communication. He made the filing of nominations the basis of what he was articulating. He was talking precisely in terms of what the Constitution provides. If you went on the ticket of one party and you decide to leave that party. Now, it is significant to note that the court itself, in that passage that you began to read, where they mm -hmm. are saying that the, the, the speaker himself couldn't determine those matters, it has to be determined in the high court. The court itself was, in effect, acknowledging that the high court is a place to go and ascertain the facts. But again, and I, I would... That's, that's what they said. I will go to Mr. Blair very shortly. Again, in the reasons that they gave, which we'll go into details uh, in, they talked about the fact that it, this is supposed to be determined by the high court. Exactly. Doesn't mean that the Supreme Court is barred from uh, going into it. And they actually cited the Attorney General's arguments uh, uh, during yeah, when but, the case but, was being you heard. Know, unfortunately, they failed to address some of their own precedents. There was one precedent cited by the lead majority judgment, the Jachi Kwesen case, which it will be interesting to uh, come back to in a moment. But the other authorities, the other judicial precedents, Yeboa and J.H. Mensah, the Sal case, the, the decision of the uh, Supreme Court in the Sal case, including a decision authored by the Chief Justice in which he extensively elaborated on why the high court is the place to go in order to declare a seat, uh, a, 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 an election, you know, not valid. So, I mean, there are inconsistencies between what has been said in previous decisions and the reference to that particular uh, Jachi Kwesen decision. But my point is that at the end of all of that, back and forth, citing cases and so on, no directions were given about whether the seats of those four have been vacated or not. In fact, what they seem to be saying is that that is a matter which has to be determined as a matter of fact in the high court. Mm -hmm. that's, my, that's my reading of the judgment, that it has to be determined in the high court. So, in a sense, we're back to square one. We're back to square one. Mr. Blay, what do you think? Are we back to square one? Definitely not. I don't believe that we're back to say one. From my understanding of the judgment that I have had time just this afternoon to, to go through, and uh, it confirms what some of us have all this while have held on to saying that uh, uh, the right honorable speaker's position on the matter was wrong. Essentially, it was uh, from the long statement that you read, which Tatu has referred to as the formal statement that communication. he made. Communication. He made it clear. Of course, he spoke about uh, uh, the reason for standing firm against cross carpeting and uh, went about it in a way. But the issue was. Uh, he was interpreting 97G, 97H, essentially. That's what he was doing. And by that interpretation, he made it clear that uh, those who have uh, picked nomination form and maybe filed, and the polls maybe coming out, is taking judicial notice, judicial notice of their uh, taking those steps. And he was therefore 
reacting to what the minority leader had drawn his attention to. And he went ahead to say that uh, definitely are no more members of parliament. And that's the central point. And that's why uh, Mackin went to court for interpretation. I think after going forth, back and forth with him, saying that let's see what we can do and have to do. It remain only about two months or three months. But of course, they did not disagree. He took a different position. And then Mackin also took different position. And as I said, as I sit here, maybe I've taken a different position for my lecturer, Tachu uh, Chikata. Uh, Definitely, I disagree that the interpretation is like that. When you say you are leaving, you will leave. You are leaving and you've left. Interpretation are a, a bit different. We'll go to the interpretation. Yeah, but, but let's different. be clear. Yes. Um, when you walk in, went to the Supreme Court before the Speaker made his pronouncements. Let's be clear about that. He went to the Supreme Court, as I said, on the basis of his statements that the filing of nominations, so and so, so and so. So his going to the Supreme Court was, was not, limited, based, maybe limited was to not based on what Speaker had said. Well, uh, it's Speaker subsequently fell into that uh, description and uh, his action indeed agreed with what uh, Afanyo Manke had said that this is what it is. He read it formally and indeed they used the formal declaration and what he said as part of the records before the Supreme Court. So uh, I, I think this one will be semantics. Real issue at stake was, did he, the right, right honorable speaker, interpret the Constitution? But what, but which, what I understand Mr. Chachu say is that, uh, Mr. Chikate say is that even before there was any substance to be looked at, he had already gone to court. Well, he wanted to go for interpretation if he wanted interpretation you can go to court not because somebody has said anything else but that's your understanding of what it is but would you Only agree date, with mr chikata court. when he says that and i've also gone through uh, this judgment that at the end of the day i believe one of the things uh, mr penny marking was looking forward to was that okay you cannot you cannot stop them from or you can't declare that your seats are vacant and Absolutely. therefore allow them to be in there was no clarity on that and it is the reason he's saying that we are back to square one you don't seem to agree I, with that did you I, find a clear I, direction in I, that uh that you said it but uh, I'm, I'm finding it very hard to follow exactly what is indeed it was the move had been preemptive but the Right Honorable Speaker, Alban Babin, had even earlier on, in the course of the uh, Hula Balu, has said that he had not made a formal declaration or he has made a, made a ruling. It was an opinion. It was expressed at one stage. He had said so. But he didn't use the word opinion. He, he said that he was given information on what he had examined, based on what he had examined. So what the was it? Is, it? is it a ruling? Should the parliamentarians take it as a ruling? Has his attention been drawn to a formal complaint? How did it come to him? And this, he made a ruling. And based on this, there were a few changes in the House. Well, a we... few dis disagreements in the House. And based on which, somebody went to the court and said that, please, the Supreme Court should in interpret it and make declarations so that based on that we all can go back and then know what to do we'll be Play going for a break very shortly and i'll come back to mr chikata but i want to read your own constitution to you which and constitution i'm talking about the npp's constitution yes what do you want to read it for? and i want to read it is under for feature of membership which mm -hmm. is nine and nine one says a member of the party who stands as an independent candidate against the officially elected member of the party or who joins or declares his or her support for another political party or for an independent candidate when the party has sponsored a candidate in a general or by election automatically forfeit his or her membership of the party. You've read that, I've heard it, and I know that. But I hope you have also taken time to read the judgment. I Indeed, have read my the judgment and I'm just talking to you about it. may not convince you. I've taken time to read it. It says that the right, you can't, in fact, even if you forfeit the right of somebody who is a member of your party because 
done something one way or the other, it doesn't automatically lead to him losing his seat in parliament. It's different if you forfeit your membership in your party. That one, I don't have any quarrel over that. But the point is, does the member or representative of a constituency, does he automatically lose his seat once he's done something that may be frowned upon by his party? And that the judgment addressed. And that the Supreme Court judges addressed that to me very satisfactorily. Yeah, but they also recognize that the issue whether you have left your party is an issue of fact I that has to be determined. I agree with you. And in the end, they did not determine that issue. That's why I said we're back to square one, because that is, in a sense, the bone of contention. Because that's why Afenio Markin was disputing his losing his position as majority leader. Because in his estimation, the, the vacation of seats has not happened. So he was going to the court for the court to determine that they have not vacated their seats. The court didn't determine that. The court it, said that that is a matter which has to be determined as a factual inquiry. And they went through the elements of the factual inquiry. And basically, what I find quite interesting is that the elements that they went through in that factual inquiry are quite similar to what the speaker also went through when he was making his formal communication. Because he too said, it's a matter of fact whether they have left the party. You know, let me be very simple about this. Honorable Esiama, Honorable Esiama, and, 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 and I think uh, Wasima is what I'm used to calling him because mm. Freddie Blay is what his official name, but his, uh, his proper name is Wasima. Anyway, you are so, right. so, Absolutely right. so I'm sure Wasima will agree that when you look at Honorable Esiama's case, 971H, it says that an independent, Lee, uh, an independent is now standing on, you know, the ticket of a party. Now, in the notice of poll that shows that for Mena, the candidates in this poll include Honorable uh, Esiama, he is now standing with the symbols of the new patriotic party. And he can't do that unless, or, or the, the Electoral Commission can't publish such a notice unless he himself has filed papers to them that shows that he is a member of the party on whose ticket he's standing. I mean, that's, I think, basic. Mm. So what I want to ask directly for Wasimau to respond to is, so in his case, for instance, does the notice of poll which reflects him having NPP party symbol. Does it tell an untruth? Is it inaccurate? Is it based on something that he said to the Electoral Commission? Or, you know, do they have to publish a new notice that shows whatever he presented as being more accurate? Is it, is it correct that he's now, he has formulated during this term in parliament, he has actually put forward something, a, a, a statement, a representation to the Electoral Commission and hence to the people of Ghana that he is no longer an independent candidate.